The rest of the form is providing information about um, the condition of the lake, or more specifically, uh, our perception of the condition of the lake. Um, so uh, the first page of this, the first side of this page, has four questions that are related to the physical condition, aquatic plants, and recreational conditions of the lake. Um, so before you do any measurements of water clarity, before you collect any water samples, we want you to fill out this form. We want you to do it before you do any of those things because we don't want the measurements to affect your perception of the lake. Each of them are set up in the same way and that we're gonna ask you to evaluate those conditions on a five point scale, one being the best and five being the worst. Um, so the first question is, Please circle the one number that best describes the physical condition of the lake water today, and there are five choices. Number one is crystal clear water. Number two is not quite crystal clear, a little algae visible. Number three is definite algae greenness, yellowness, or brownness apparent. Number four is high algae levels. Number five is severely high algae levels. Um, I'd say two. Not two, which is not quite crystal clear. Um, and there is no right answer to this question. It really depends on your experience in this lake um, and that um, this condition might be considered severely high algae levels for someone who's used to a lake in the Adirondacks that normally has extremely high water clarity. And it might be crystal clear for uh, someone who's coming from a lake where there is very poor water clarity. So um, this assessment is unique to each lake and so there is no right answer to that question or any of these questions. Then the next question is please circle the one number that best describes the aquatic plant populations in areas where people swim and boat today. So obviously we're in the deepest part of the lake. Um, we're in about 10 feet of water and it's unlikely that there are going to be aquatic plants growing in here. Um, but we know that they frequently grow along the shoreline. So we want you to evaluate a single location on the shoreline which is most characteristic of the lake and preferably a location that isn't actively managed. So if you were sampling outside of your dock um, or, or you were evaluating outside of your dock, that might be an area where you hand pull plants or you put down a benthic barrier or a mat. That's not an area we want you to evaluate. So the five choices that are available is number one, no plants are visible. Number two, some plants are visible, but they don't grow to the lake surface. Number three, some plants grow to the lake surface. Number four, plants grow densely at the lake surface. And number five, dense plants, plant growth everywhere on the shoreline except in the deepest areas of the lake. Well, we saw some, I mean, we saw plants underwater, but we also saw some reaching the surface. Okay. But not a lot. So okay. So I would think between two and three. Okay, and so given your description, what we'd probably be looking for is the most dominant aquatic plant type. So if you saw a lily pad here or there, that shouldn't really be the way that we fully describe it. Okay, so then I'd say two. Okay, so that's question B. Question C, please circle the one number that best describes the recreational suitability of the lake. Um, and again, there are five choices available. Number one is beautiful, could not be nicer. Number two is very minor aesthetic problems, but excellent for swimming, boating, and overall use. Number three is swimming and aesthetic uses are slightly impaired. Number four is swimming and aesthetic uses are substantially impaired. And number five, swimming and aesthetic uh, enjoyment of the lake is impossible. Again, I'm kind of stuck between two and three. Um, I'd say that swimming and aesthetic enjoyment are slightly impaired. So, so that's number two, uh, very, number three. three. Uh, swimming and aesthetic enjoyment slightly impaired, okay? And then number four, please circle all numbers that affect your opinion of recreational use of the lake today. And we give you several choices. Um, first choice is zero, no problems are observed. That should only be filled out if you said the lake is beautiful, could not be nicer. Number one is poor water clarity. Number two is excessive weed growth. And we, you can tell us what type of weed growth it is, whether it's emergent plants or floating plants or submergent plants. Uh, number three, too much algae and or odor. Number four, the lake looks bad. Number five, poor weather. The weather is so bad that you really can't assess the conditions of the lake. Number six, litter, surface debris, other beach or floating material, including foam or pollen. Number seven, too many lake users. Or number eight, other, that you can add any of your own information if you think that none of these are fully descriptive. Okay. So the poor water clarity, one, and then also because we saw the algae bloom. Okay, um, so... Number one is poor water clarity, and number three is too much algae and or odor. Okay? Then the back of the form 
has two additional questions which are related to health and safety issues. Um, this has been added to the program fairly recently because of um, an increasing concern about things like algae blooms. So uh, the next question is, do you observe or have you been made aware of any of the following problems at this time or within the very recent history today? And please circle all that apply. Um, so number one is complaints about taste or odor in the drinking water. Uh, number two, lake residents who use the lake for drinking or swimming complaining of stomach illness or animals showing illness from drinking lake water. Number three, swimmers complaining about uh, uh, itching or redness uh, or hay fever-like symptoms. Number four, observations of algae blooms or other water discoloration. Number five, dead fish. Number six, unusual wildlife occurrences like leeches or bryozoans or unusual wildlife behavior. Or number seven, other. The observation of the algae blooms, because it would count for today. Okay, yep. Um, so we did see an algae bloom today, so we'll circle number four. Um, and um, any description that we can give, um, we noticed, um, how did the bloom look? Um, it's like streaks. Okay. The dots and some spilled paint. Okay, and where did we see the bloom? Um, on the western shoreline. Okay. And then the last question is the same one as we just asked, but um, have any of these problems been observed since your last sampling session, so over the last two weeks? So are we aware of any of these conditions in the last two weeks? Yeah, we knew that there was a bloom here. Okay, so we'll report um, uh, algae bloom for number four as well. Okay, and then on the bottom, we asked lake location of these occurrences, and we'll again say um, it was on the western shoreline. And then date and observation, uh, date and time of observation. Um, we can record that information down here as well. Okay, and that's all we need to do to complete this form. Again, we need to remember that this form should be filled out before we do any secchi disc measurement reading and before we collect any water samples. So that's the field observations form.